Hello, my name is Tom, and in this session, I'm going to talk to you about how to use a feature inside Mastercam 2019 milling that's called OptiRough. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this part model that was provided to us by our customer. It's a little camera bracket, and we're going to use the OptiRough feature to remove the stock real quickly. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that we have this part oriented correctly and we're going to move it to the origin. So the origin is way over here. So what I'm going to do is right click, select top. Now you can see it's kind of out in, out in space. So we select the wireframe tab and what I would suggest do is select bounding box then this menu pops up and it says select one or more of the entities so I'm going to just draw a window so you can see it's all highlighted click end selection and then it draws this box based on the features that Mastercam sees so we're going to click OK now from the transform tab we're going to click on move to origin and then I want to let the cursor snap to the midpoint of this line. So I'm going to do that by wanding over this menu over here, click left clicking on it and select midpoint. Then highlight that line and it will automatically move that part and lock it to the origin um, based on the midpoint of this line. Okay. So the only other thing I want to do is make sure I look at the front, right click fit, and you can see that the top of the part is way below origin. So again, I want to move that to where this top service is tied to the Z0 origin. So from the front, again, I go to wireframe, select bounding box, I'm going to select the part and selection and click OK. So there should be a box or a window right here. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Transfer, move to origin, wand over auto cursor, left click on it, select midpoint, select that line, and it automatically snaps to the origin. So now in the front view, Z0, or the top of the part, is locked to the origin. And in the top view, which is where we'll be doing all of our milling, you can see the top side of the part, or the far side of the part, is locked to the origin. This is the orientation that we're going to be machining the part. So these boxes that we created are basically just used for orienting the part. and. Um, moving it to origin so if you hold the shift key down and then you select one of those legs it grabs the whole window then you right click and click delete then do the same thing shift click on one of those legs right click and delete and now we're actually ready for milling all right so at this point we're going to right click and select top then we're going to pick our machine we're going to click on the machine tab and we're going to pick the mill default and what i'd like to do is go back to wireframe we're going to select the bounding box we're going to select all the entities click ok and then we're going to add plus 0.250 in the x direction and plus 0.250 enter for the Y so that will be the outline of the stock so that is 250 thousandths bigger in both the directions okay so we'll click OK on that then we're gonna right click next to this red arrow click mill toolpaths and under service high-speed toolpath we're gonna pick dynamic OptiRough so we left click on that and the first thing we're going to do is right here we have no entities 
So we're going to click on that line and then this arrow becomes active that says select entities. So we'll click on that and we're going to pick that part and make sure that it picks the whole thing. See that didn't highlight it all so make sure you you draw a window around it and make sure the whole thing is highlighted. Okay then we click end selection. So now we have 33 entities it defaults at 50,000 wall stock and 50,000 floor stock. I usually like to reduce that to about 30 and then on the floor you just double click on that field and you enter how much you want to leave on that floor. Click OK. Then the next tab we're going to do is toolpath control. So boundary chains, we're going to click on this little arrow and that window that I just created right here, that's the stock outline. Mastercam needs to know how big the stock is. So we're going to select chain from this menu, click on one of these legs, and it grabs the whole rectangle. Okay. Then we click OK. So now it knows its boundary. Strategy from outside usually is default. We're going to leave that alone. Center going to leave all that alone. We're going to pick a tool from this library. We're going to pick a half inch flat end mill. Click OK. I'm going to double click it and all I'm going to do here is go to the next page and just make that tool number one. Enter. And I'm going to close that. Right here I'm just going to make a comment that says Opti for Opti Rough. I'm going to set that at 7000. That's the max speed of my spindle. And feed rate 60 inches a minute and the plunge rate 60 inches a minute. All right, then the next parameter is going to be the cut parameters. And the first thing we want to look at is the step over amount, which is set at 0.1. We'll leave that alone. Then the step down is set at 0.1. Now that is something that we determine so let's first, let's just click out of the parameter box and let's see how thick this part is. And let's see what this step is right here and how deep this pocket is. Well, we need some of that inf information to uh, populate those parameters. So I'm going to right click and select front. And I go to drafting and I'm going to do a vertical dimension and the step is 500 and the overall depth is 750. So we want to cut it about 50 thousandths deeper than that. So we'll go to a depth of 800. Okay. So we click OK on that. Right click top. I'll go back to home. Dynamic. I'm going to roll the model a little bit and I'm going to just wand over this floor where it highlights. See that? I'm going to click it and it tells me that the Z depth is 200 or minus 252 thousands. Okay. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to get rid of these dimensions real quick. I'll go back into the parameters. So to step down, we're just going to go ahead and go to full depth. That's 800 thousandths for aluminum. That's not going to be a problem for a half inch end mill to do that. 0.8 step down. And then we're going to do a step up of 0.250. Okay. Then the next tab is going to be transitions. It says helix radius. So that's that. That's the helical motion it will do for a pocket. Then Z clearance is 125. So it starts that helical motion into that pocket 125 thousandths above the part at an angle of two degrees. And it tells us that it's going to skip pockets smaller than 0.550. So our pocket is just slightly bigger than that. So we should see that pocket being rough machined. Then the next tab is steep and shallow. We're going to put a check mark in there and we're going to detect the limits. And here we see that the part is 750 thick. 
we want to go to minus 0.8. If we leave that 750 in there, it will not go deeper than 750. So we're going to put that minus 0.8 in there because we told it earlier that we're going to take a depth of cut of 0.8. Okay. Then on to linking parameters. Here's our clearance plane that it wraps to right after uh, tool change. And these are just some of the approaches that we're just going to leave alone. Okay. Next tab, arc filter and tolerances. Because this is roughing, I don't have to use a tolerance of 1000s. We're going to change that to 5000s. The smaller that tolerance is, the more code it will generate. Okay. Then I'm going to put a check mark in this box, which allows me to put a check mark in this box for smoothing settings. And I'm going to check minimize number of points. So that again reduces the amount of code that it's going to generate. Then I'm going to take this slide and slide it over to where this reads 50% on the cut tolerance. Okay. Then we're going to turn the coolant on. It was already on. And then we're done. We'll click OK. We let it regenerate. Let's see what it does. So it looks like it's getting ready to cut the pocket. We've got it slowed down. So there's that helical motion to rough the pocket. We zoom in a little bit. Now that orange is just uh, showing the, the amount of material that's being taken off. You can turn it on and off right here. So you can see the tool path as it goes down. Okay. And then it goes directly to full depth. I'm going to look at it from the top. And I'm going to turn my tool path back on. So you can kind of see the stock removal. And you can see the motions that your machine will be doing as it's doing the 100,000 step over, removing all that stock. Then it's going to do a step up. And you can see it's roughing out that step in front. So there it is. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to roll it. And you can see all the tool paths. And if I zoom in, you can see it's leaving stock on the bottom, that's at 15 thousandths that we put in. And also on the pocket itself, it should have left 15 thousandths um, on the floor of that pocket. Okay. So we click OK. I'm going to click on top. Now I want to see this in solid verify. So I'm going to click on the plus here. We're going to do stock setup. I'm going to select corners of this window that we created. And let's say that we're working with material that is an inch and a quarter thick. Okay. I got something to hold on to in the vise. Now I'm going to put a check mark in display and then click OK. So you can see the outline of the stock. Yeah. So now if I click on this little menu where it says verify selected operations, it's going to open up a solid model verification. All right. And I'm going to turn this down a little bit. Click play. Doing the pocket. And there's our roughed part. Pretty handy feature in Mastercam. It makes for some quick code. And all it's leaving us is uh, 30 thousandths on the wall and 15 thousandths on the floor to do the finishing ops. All right, I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.